So in this short video, let me put it on, you see how it is uh, working in practice. So as you see that there is the container handling, there are the locks in the corner of the spreader, and there is the equipment which is moving also the containers on the, on the land side. So what are the stakeholders saying about this type of working? So automation developers, they say that this is the only way to do the development efficiently. And that's the reason we are working with some of the most advanced automation, uh, crane automation developers in the world. Crane owners say that they would like actually to see the automation working with digital twin before the actual implementation is starting. And in addition, they can use this to introduce and train uh, the people for automation months before the actual uh, cranes arrive. And I have a couple of examples here. First, the, our dynamic soil, we have the traditional excavator example. And here's an example of one training simulator that is used for coal handling. But this could also be used um, for the development of autonomous systems. As you can see, there are lots of machine, machinery in the environment. There's this handyman extraordinary walking around and taking care of nothing. So the machine should react somehow to that. And then I have another example related to the RTG train. And here's the interaction using collisions between the spreader, the container, the transfer vehicle. And as you can see, there's a slack in the twist lock models. The spreader is then connected wire ropes to the and drives to the RTG frame. And then the whole system can be simulated and analyzed. And similar process models can be used in different areas. So it's not limited only for construction or material handling. Can you use a simulation to optimize the patching line according to your customer's needs? And can it also be used for customer demos demonstrations? And the answer is yes for the both, both sides of the question. So um, you can keep on keep on simulating if, if there's any, any, any changes made or any needs to change the line. And also, this is a fantastic uh, way how to, you know, demonstrate the line uh, in sales, but also by the customer uh, to show that, you know, things are have been planned and uh, things are working as they should. Thank you for the question. But when it comes now to the to the next level of simulation, as we call it, um, we need to acquire the environment. So what is around the machine? Um, what does the machine see? What would the operator see? And there, quite new sensor technologies come into play. And we have to work with multiple data points, like a camera picture has many, many points that you have to work with. And the complexity of the algorithms is therefore obviously increasing. And that was the main um, target for us then also to expand our simulator. So right now we, we upgraded the simulator to be able to simulate as well um, new sensors. And therefore we moved the complete simulator environment to Unity um, with the help of Mebea. And we implemented the, the ROS2 framework and we have a dedicated high performance computer connected to our simulator exchanging data via ROS and using um, then AI algorithms on that dedicated hardware to simulate um, uh, more advanced assistances and autonomous systems. The two different softwares uh, talk to each other through the TCP IP interface. We uh, created this, uh, um, say, protocol to exchange data so that the multi-body software, namely Nevea, can solve the differential equations while uh, in MATLAB Simulink, we uh, solve uh, the, the part of the control and uh, we simulate the actuators. So for instance, like this, we have the user inputs because Medea allows for an easy connection of uh, a joystick, for instance, or, and that's what we are working at at the moment, uh, using 
CAN signals. So we have a vehicle simulator in the office uh, that provides uh, the signals to the TCP IP interface and MATLAB uh, feeds back the, the torques coming from, uh, from the powertrain and uh, Nevea calculates the velocities. We can see this in the actual MATLAB Simulink uh, block. So we also use Medea to uh, provide virtual sensor readings uh, so that we can, for instance, there you see coordinates and physical signals. We have acceleration sensors fitting on our uh, um, vehicle, our simulated vehicle, uh, to be able then to uh, you know, look at the data, understand how the vehicle behaves.